Matt Chapman at this point of the offseason has got to be hating what is going on right now. At 30 years old, coming off of a gold glove season with the Toronto Blue Jays, Matt Chapman entered into the free agency market looking to get paid. The initial word on the street was looking like he might actually get the bag, considering he was far and away the best third baseman available. That isn't what happened though. Matt Chapman has not only not gotten the bag, but he's not even on a team yet. And considering what just happened to Cody Bellinger, it's starting to look like Matt Chapman has made a horrible mistake. What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this one folks, we are gonna be talking about Matt Chapman and how the recent deal that Cody Bellinger just signed with the Cubs kind of screws over Matt Chapman and what his future might actually look like. Before we get into it, I encourage you guys to hit the like and smash the subscribe button if you enjoy baseball content and discussion so you don't miss any future videos all right folks let's get into it so the reason that we're talking about this right now is because of cody bellinger's recent contract just a little while ago cody bellinger signed a deal with the chicago cubs that really turned some heads rather than getting the 200 million dollars that he was reportedly asking for bellinger instead got paid 80 million for three years now the catch with this deal is that Cody Bellinger actually has a few player opt-outs. He can literally opt out and go back to free agency after every single year with the Cubs. So effectively, if he puts up great numbers again this season, we're probably going to have to go through the Cody Bellinger drama once again next offseason. Now this deal, even though it isn't what Bellinger initially wanted, really isn't the worst thing in the world. He's only 28 years old right now. So if he can go in and put up a great season again, again, then hit free agency and get paid, he's absolutely laughing. Plus, he makes $30 million this season, so really, it isn't all that bad. For Matt Chapman, though, a deal structured like this wouldn't be nearly as appealing. Chapman, even though he was a stud defensively last year, really wasn't that impressive at all with the bat. He finished with a 240 batting average, an OPS of 755, and only 54 RBIs. It should also be noted that Matt Chapman, when runners were in scoring position was absolutely abysmal last year. Trust me, I'm a Toronto Blue Jays fan and, uh, it was a tough watch. Considering he's had three years in a row now that have all been around this mark, and the last time that he really showed everyone he was a true threat at the dish was in 2019, it doesn't instill teams with a whole lot of confidence to give this guy the bag. And this is where the big mistake comes in. A lot of people don't remember this, but at the beginning of the offseason, the Toronto Blue Jays, they were fully going after Matt Chapman. MLB Trade Rumors says that it isn't known exactly exactly when the Jays made the offer or how much was on the table, though Mitchell indicates that Chapman passed on more than $100 million over the span of a four or five year contract. Over $100 million is what the Toronto Blue Jays offered Matt Chapman and Chapman denied it. Like, what are you doing, dude? I remember when this news came out and, well, first I was genuinely shook that the Jays even offered a contract that big, but then secondly, I was shook at the fact that Matt Chapman thought he could make more on the free agency market. Obviously, hindsight is 2020, but he isn't going to be getting anywhere close to that now. And part of the problem is that he is just running out of suitors. The Jays, the team that offered all that money back then, They've already gone out and addressed their third base spot, and if they were to bring him in now, they would not only have to make some significant changes to the roster, but they'd also have to enter into a new bracket in the tax threshold, which is something that I just don't think they want to do. In fact, a lot of people are speculating that the only true suitor right now for Matt Chapman is the San Francisco Giants. and. If that's the case, if they are the only team right now looking at bringing him in, then that means that Matt Chapman has absolutely no leverage whatsoever and effectively just needs to take what they offer him. At this point of the offseason, a long-term deal is completely off the table. And honestly, if he gets a two-year deal worth $50 million, then he'd be pretty lucky. But folks, let me know what you think about all this in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time.